we were going out on a night ambush Christmas Eve. Oh. And Tillerson said uh, he, I guess, spoke to a couple of other squads that were going out on an ambush or who are going to be a uh, blocking force or something. He said, we're going to stay close to a friendly ville because I'm not going to have to report anybody being killed on Christmas, you know, notes being home or anything like that. And we went out. Uh, we didn't go. I don't. I don't remember going too far. And we we set up, and you know, on a, the, there's about six or eight of us out on the ambush. And we uh, one guy stays awake, and everybody else nods off. And uh, yeah, would hear on the radio, fall secure. You know, key your handset two times and. Any, anyway, everything was secure. And then we heard a uh, a baby crying. Mm. And it was, uh, it was surreal. It was, oh my God, Christmas Eve, we're in, out in the jungle and there's, uh, you know, the ville nearby and there's a baby crying and uh, it was just, get up in the morning and went back to back to the hill, and that was my experience, and I'll never forget it. Were the thoughts that went through your head that night? I know it's a very long time ago, but so far as you recall, were the thoughts that went through your head that night when you're not sleeping any any different? Do you think from what they might have been a week before or two weeks after? Did it did it the the baby crying? You know, you connected that to the holiday, but. Apart from that, was there really any difference in your mind? No, no, that that was it. You know, the only thing was, wow, what a, you know, you look up and you see the stars and everything, and you, you know, you wonder what happened two thousand years earlier. You arrived in South Vietnam, if I have it correct, um, right before Christmas, nineteen sixty-seven. Yes, I did, and. The thing that struck me uh, that I remember most was there were no decorations in our officers club called the Tiger's Den. And somebody had taken a bar of soap or something like that and written on the mirror behind the bar, it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the extent of what was in the officers club. I had taken my in-country check ride the day before Christmas. Um, I do remember um, that there was a kind of barbecue at one of the first few days I was there. We would have these barbecues out in front of the hooches and um, bring the orphans and the sisters from town. And then we had presents for them. We Somehow we bought presents at the PX and had some things to give them. Um, I also remember that there was a kind of a USO uh, small facility, like a rec room down by where the chapel was on our base. And there were what we called donut dollies, you know, right. uh, women that had volunteered to come over mm -hmm. and they had a Christmas, a small Christmas tree in there. I remember those couple of things about um christmas but i think what struck me most was having been in a seminary where the whole world revolves around the holy days and holidays uh it was the counterpoint of just and my mother uh decorated our house with all sorts of garlands and things she was really an artistic person so to see christmas just being designated by something scratched on the mirror behind the bar just seemed kind of, hmm. I realized I wasn't in Kansas anymore, you know. I had just turned 19 years old because my birthday is in December. Um, and of course, uh, being a newbie uh, on that particular uh, hill was, um, it was called Hill 55. And that's where our regimental base was, the 7th Marine Regiment. 
and <clears throat> when I got there, just before Christmas, we were put on bunker watch. And that means at nighttime, you're on a bunker looking out over this hill to see, make sure enemy soldiers don't come or charge up the hill. And um, what was really nice, along about midnight, is darkness like you wouldn't believe. You couldn't hardly see your hand in front of your face. And <clears throat> what happened was all around us on in other areas, not just our hill, but other areas, the Marines started popping flares. Mm -hmm. And they were different colors. They were green and red and white. <clears throat> and that's the way they were celebrating Christmas. Um, they were just popping flares. Of course, the colonel didn't like it too much, but they understood that we were celebrating Christmas by popping these different colored flares because that was all we had, all about all we had, you know, to do any celebrating with. Mm. But the thing I remember other than that is the darkness, how dark and how your mind would play tricks on you. Uh, because it was so dark, you'd be straining your eyes to see. And you would swear you could see movement, but it wasn't. It was your eyes playing tricks on you. 